Hello, and in today's video, we're going to cover a question that's come up a number of times, which is once I've created my map or created my 3D model in WebODM, how do I share that with clients? And there's several different ways to do it, but uh, the easiest way, or perhaps the easiest way, is to create an instance of WebODM that's accessible from the internet, and then you can just give your clients the URL, and they can log on the same as you would. So how do we do that? So we're going to start on the GitHub page of WebODM, and uh, this is the URL, and I'm going to put that in the description below. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we find this file called readme.md, and we're going to click on that. And that's going to open up this readme file, and it's got lots of information about WebODM, but what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And at the bottom, you've got this information where it says run it on the cloud. So it suggests Google Compute or Amazon Web Services. I'm going to use AWS because that's what I've been using for other things. I'm going to jump over to my Amazon EC2 dashboard. So EC stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. If you don't have an Amazon account already, there's plenty of tutorials on how to get that set up, or you could just follow their own instructions. So I'm going to assume that you're able to get to this point and you're ready to start launching an instance. So when you get here, we're going to click on this button that says Launch Instance. And we need to give it away a name. So I'm going to call this Web ODM Client Tutorial. And I'm going to put 4 gigabyte. Uh, down here, we need to make some decisions. So we're going to pick Ubuntu. Because if you go back over to the Web ODM README, you'll see it says Ubuntu 18.0. LTS. So we're going to pick Ubuntu and then we're going to come down and we're going to select what type of machine, what size of machine we need. Now you've got some decisions to make here. There's two types of instances that you can set up. One is a machine that is going to be able to actually create the maps and the ortho mosaics and the 3D models. And for that, you're going to need a fairly decently large machine and that's going to cost you a lot of money. But if all you're looking to do is to make something available that you can put your uh, models into for the client to view, then you can actually create a smaller machine. And then what you can do is process your maps elsewhere. So either on your PC at the office or at home, or you can upload them and process them in WebODM Lightning and then download them. And if you do that, then you can upload them into this instance and I'll show you how to do that at the end. So since all I'm doing here is setting up something for the client and I'm not really looking for something that will be processing maps, I'm going to pick this one here. This one says T2 medium. And the reason I'm picking this is it has four gigabytes of memory, which in other documentation, uh, web ODM say that you need four gigabytes of memory to, uh, to run this software. So I'm going to pick this one. And we're going to scroll down a little bit more. Key pair login. I'm going to create a key pair. This is a security protocol that enables you to download a file that you can use if you're accessing at a very low level, what's called a terminal level. And you can download this file and use that as, as sort of an alternative to a password. It's a much more secure method. So I'm going to create one. I'll just give it a name. I'll call it WebODM. Create key pair and it'll download it. So you'll see over there, we got a download. That's done. We don't really need to do anything else there. Um, on the network settings, I'm going to leave a few things. I'm going to leave this fairly open. So I'm saying I can access this from anywhere. This isn't necessarily best practice. We should really say from my IP, but I've actually had some issues where if you say oh, my IP, it actually won't let me in. So I'm going to leave this for anywhere for this demo. And I'm also going to say allow uh, access from HTTPS and HTTP. So HTTP is this just standard internet protocols. So we've got that. Configure storage. By default, it gives you eight gigabytes. That is not enough. Um, if you try to install WebODM in eight gigabytes, it's going to fail. They recommend 100 gigabytes. And GP2 is, is fine as the storage medium. So we're going to have a little bit more setup that we need to do later. But for now, that's all we need to do. And we're going to click Launch. And it's going to run through some setup. And then what's going to happen is if we go back to EC2, you'll see it says instances running zero. It's going to take about five minutes to get this thing up and running. 
So we'll take a pause here and we will come back once this thing is set up and has passed all of its tests. OK, so here we are. I went from my EC2 dashboard into my instances running and I waited until this thing here said two of two checks passed. Um, if you don't wait for that, sometimes you get errors trying to log in. So now we're going to drill into it and we're going to hit this connect button. Um, they've actually made this a lot easier now. It used to be very complicated to connect through an SSH client. So I actually quite like that this works in a much simpler way. And OK, now that we've connected, we are now at the the root level of this uh, of this system. And now what we're going to do is we're, we're literally just going to go over here and we're going to start taking these commands and copying them over to set up this machine. And it's, it's literally just cut and paste. So what we're going to do is one by one, we're going to go sudo apt get update. And uh, if you're not familiar with um, Ubuntu or Linux, sudo stands for super user do. So what's going to happen here is we're going to go through these commands one by one and just um, execute the commands. It's going to download different software. It's going to update things. Um, this will take a little while to do. So I'm going to just execute all of the commands without talking through it. And we're just going to zip through this super quick. This is the upgrade. Making sure that all of the software that we have is up to date. Um, I didn't need to enter Y there. If it's got a capital and you just hit return, that's the default. If you get these instances, you can just tab forward and hit OK. So this is installing a thing called Docker. Docker is a container that basically creates a, an environment that you can run software within. So what's nice about Docker is that it sort of makes the implementation machine independent. Again, just tab through, hit OK. Now we're going to run this command, git clone. You have to go all the way over to where it says depth one. And what this is actually doing is it's copying across the software from the repository. And then we're going to change directory into this web ODM directory, which is basically just been created. And then we're going to run this command sudo web ODM sh start. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to start web ODM on this server. This will take a little while to run. OK, so here we are. Um, everything is finished and you can see at the bottom it says congratulations. If there are no errors, web ODM should be up and running. Open a web browser and navigate to and it gives you this. Now we're actually not going to navigate to localhost because we have an IP address. And you'll see here it, it ends with colon 8000. And that means that this is running on port 8000. So we do actually have a little bit more work to do because port 8000 is not open by default. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our EC2 dashboard. We're going to drill into our EC2 client and we're going to go to security and under security groups. You'll see we've got a few rules here that allow us access. But what we need to do is we need to add one that opens up port 8000. So I'm going to edit inbound rules, add a rule, custom TCP. I'm going to put 8000 and say anywhere IPv4. That's a standard IP address and save rules. And in theory now we should be ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go back to my instance, drill in, and you'll see we've got a, a public IP address. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this thing to copy it. And I can't just click on this open address because if I do that, it will try and open it on port 80, which is not what we want. But I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to paste the IP address and I'm going to follow with colon 8000. And if everything works, we should get a login screen. Let's see what happens. Here it is. We've got a welcome screen. We need to create an administrator account. So I'm just for this place, I'm going to put Barry and a little password that I really don't care about and click create account. And here we are. We are up and running with our dashboard and all the usual things. Okay. So now that we've got the client facing instance of web ODM up and running, how do we actually put something into it that we can share with clients? 
So let's make the assumption that we are processing them elsewhere. So this is my local instance and I've got a few little projects here. So I'm going to pick this particular one, Express Script, and I'm going to open this. And if I drill into it, you'll see you get this button or drop down that says Download Assets. And I'm going to select that and I'm going to hit All Assets. And that's going to generate a file and it will download it. It will take a, a few minutes to do. So we'll come back to that in a second. OK, so here we are. We've uh, finished the download. You can see over here, download is complete. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to our public instance and I've created a project called Express Scripts. I'm going to you can you can go over here and click on this import button. And then you get the option to upload a file. And this is the file that I downloaded from the other instance. I'm just going to say open. And what you'll see is it'll import that file and then it will take a little while to process it. So once this import is complete, um, you have to give it a couple of minutes and then you'll end up with it um, almost as though it had um, actually performed the processing of the photos. Um, you get that complete view and then we can go in and show you how to use it. So here we are. The import has completed. Um, you do have to wait a little while and it sort of doesn't really give you much idea of what's going on behind the scenes. So just, you know, go away, make a cup of tea and let it do its thing. Once you get to the point where you have the, if it's, if it's shrunk, you should have the, um, the view map option up here. Um, but if you expand it, and let me just show you, this is the original. If I show you this, expand that and do view map. You've got your map here. That's your author mosaic. And then we can click on view 3D. This is the one that's running on my local machine. And then if we go over to the client facing machine, you'll see you get exactly the same view. We're doing view map. You can see the view map there works fine. And then 3D, click on that. You get your 3D view. We can add textures to it and do what we need to do. So that's it. If after watching this tutorial, you feel like it's not really something that's for you, um, feel free to reach out. We do offer consulting and we can help get you set up. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is we're using in this demo instance, we're using a, an IP address instead of a URL. In a perfect world, what you would actually do is create a URL and a static IP address. And that way you, you'll give the client a proper URL. You don't have to give them a whole bunch of numbers that's probably just going to confuse them. So that's it. Feel free to reach out with any questions and uh, I hope you found this useful.